In lesson 41, you're going to be learning about the multiplication rule for algebra equations. We just learned in lesson 40 about the addition subtraction rule. And remember in that, the same number can be added or subtracted from both sides of an equation without changing the solution to the equation. First though, in lesson 41, let's look at reciprocals. And that's a big word. If you look at the examples that they show you there, you should be able to understand what reciprocal means. You just invert the fraction. Two-fifths, the reciprocal of that is five-halves, and so on. So make sure you know what the word reciprocal means. Now, if you have a product of reciprocals, that always equals one. For example, if you had two-fifths, if you multiplied it by its reciprocal, five-halves, that equals one because the twos cancel to ones. The fives cancel to ones. We don't have to write the ones down. I'm just doing that for example purpose here. And so that equals one. You might be wondering, well, no kidding. I, I know that. I understand that. Why do I need to know that? Well, it's a huge important thing to know for the multiplication rule in part C and you'll see when we do some problems as to why that's so important. And if you don't understand that, it'll make the problems a whole lot harder for you. When you multiply a number by its reciprocal, the answer is 1. Look at the multiplication rule for equations on page 117. It's that boxed area there in the middle of the page about. It says both sides of an equation can be multiplied by the same number except for 0 without changing the solution to the equation. So remember the addition subtraction rule we just talked about. You can add or subtract the same number from both sides. Multiplication rule, both sides can be multiplied by the same number except for zero without changing the solution. Let's just go ahead and do some practice problems and learn how to do this. There's six practice problems, so we should get quite a bit of practice on this. The practice problem says solve each equation by multiplying both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of the coefficient of x. Check each answer. Okay, look at practice problem A. Let's just write that down. 5 elevenths times x is equal to 7. Okay, before you panic because you don't know what a coefficient is, a coefficient is just the number in front of the variable. So the variable here is x. The number in front of it is 5 elevenths. That's what it's multiplied by. x is multiplied by 5 elevenths. So that's the coefficient. That's what they mean by the coefficient. Now it says to multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of that coefficient. That's how you do the multiplication rule. You say the same number can be multiplied by both sides of the equation without changing the value or changing the solution. And you still keep in mind, remember from lesson 40, we tried to remember when we're solving these equations, our goal is to isolate the x value by itself. And so the way we do that here when we have a coefficient in front of the x is we multiply both sides by the reciprocal. Now, remember what we do here? If you just have a 7 like that, it's the same thing as 7 over 1, right? If you want to write 7 over 1 like I just did, you can do that. But hopefully you understand that by now, that that 7 is in the numerator. And now what happens, 11 over 11, 5 over 5, that equals 1. We just talked about that too. When you multiply a number by its reciprocal, the value is 1. Not 0, but 1. Okay, so that means x equals 77 over 5. Now in the lessons and the answers, they don't seem to be concerned that you write them as mixed numbers anymore, so you can just leave that as an improper fraction. 77 over 5. Let's do B. Just write it down. 5 thirds x equals 4. And they're really saying 5 thirds times x, right? If there's nothing in between the 5 thirds and the x, no plus or minus sign, it's understood that that's multiplication. The coefficient of x is 5 thirds. We use our multiplication rule to get rid of the 5 thirds 
and isolate the x. So we multiply both sides by the reciprocal. And so that 3 over 3 cancels, the 5 over 5 cancels, all that equals 1. And so on the right, remember we can write the 4 as 4 over 1 if we need to, to think about it as a fraction. 4 times 3 is 12, over 1 times 5 is 5. So x equals 12 fifths for that problem. C, 2 thirds x equals 1 fourth. write it down. Okay. Also, you can think of that x. You know, we always write it in the middle there, but remember, fraction does not have a middle. We're really saying 2 thirds times x over 1, right? I mean, you don't have to write all that. It's just, I just wrote that just to make sure you understand that's what all of that means. A lot of things we don't write down because it just takes a lot of extra time, it just wastes time, and it, it kind of makes it more messy too. That's why you have to understand when you have just an x by itself there, it means x over 1. And so we multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 2 thirds, which is 3 halves. So that cancels on the left to a 1. As always, our goal is to isolate the x, and that's how we do this using the multiplication rule. Multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the x coefficient. So x, therefore, equals 1 times 3 is 3, over 4 times 2 is 8. x equals 3 eighths. Let's go on to d. Let's just write that one down. 3x equals 15. Now that one, it's probably very obvious to you that x is 5 because 3 times 5 equals 15. And in lesson 45, in a few more lessons, we're going to learn something called the division rule. But I think I'll go ahead and introduce that right here. All you would do for this one, and you can probably see that that's very easy to do it this way, just divide both sides by 3. Division rule works a whole lot like the multiplication rule. And so x equals 5. And that should make sense to you since you can just look at that problem and tell, well, 3 times 5 equals 15, that that division rule works for that as well. Look at e. Let's write that one down. x over 3 is equal to 5. Okay. Now, x over 3 you haven't seen one like that before. It's the same thing as one-third times x, right? We could write it like that. One-third times x equals 5. And then you can see that you'd multiply both sides by 3 over 1, the reciprocal. You didn't have to multiply it out like I did, change it to one-third x. I just did that to make it more clear for you to see that, since that's kind of a new one. Anytime you multiply it by the reciprocal, a number by its reciprocal, that cancels to 1. So on the left, you just get x. And on the right, 5 times 3 is 15 over 1. So that equals 15. Okay. And then f. Just write that one down. 4x equals 1 third. Okay, we can multiply both sides by one-fourth. Always, when you have a whole number, you can think of it as a fraction by writing it over one, right? And so four over one, the reciprocal of that is one over four. So if we multiply both sides by one over four, that isolates the x on the left, and we get x equals one-twelfth. Okay, well that's all for lesson 41.